Welcome to our June Jubilee Fest, and this part is where Father Rudy will give a presentation on the Sacred Heart. So you might not recognize me because I'm not in my clerics, I'm Father Joseph. And of course, this is Father Rudy here, I'm sure you all know him, he was here for many years. So just a short introduction to our speaker series, so some of you might already know why we're doing this. So this is part of our 150th anniversary celebration. and. Well, when I was thinking about it, what can we do for this celebration, there was a visiting priest and he suggested we do a speaker series on each of the statues that we have in the church because some of them are unique, you know, some of them you can't find or they're not easy to find in other churches. Uh, for example, St. Josephine Bakita over there or St. Edith Stein over there. So, so we did that, a series on each of the statues. And of course, one statue that we shouldn't miss is the Sacred Heart you know, statue. And the solemnity of the Sacred Heart is this Friday, you know, June 24th. So, buenas tardes a todos y bienvenidos a, este, a esta presentación sobre el Sagrado Corazón. Y aquí tenemos el reverendo Pad Rudy Juárez, que ustedes ya conocen. Y esta es parte de la serie de las presentaciones de las estatuas que tenemos en nuestra iglesia. Entonces, bienvenidos a todos, and welcome, Father Rudy. Thank you for being here. Well, good evening to everybody. Uh, buenas tardes a todos. It's a pleasure to be back in good old St. Patrick. It's nice to see so many of you that uh, we lived a great experience here at St. Patrick. Uh, so we have that common history uh, to share. And so we have many good memories and there's many good things to look forward to in the future. You know, of the 18 solemnities in the liturgical year, May and June have no fewer than seven. There's the Ascension, Pentecost, Trinity Sunday, Corpus Christi, Sacred Heart, in late June has two, the birth of John the Baptist and the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul. And so the actual feast of the Sacred Heart started in 1765 in Poland in different religious congregations. La devoción al Sagrado Corazón y la fiesta actual empezó en 1765 in Polonia. In 1856, Pope Pius the uh, IX made it a feast of the Universal Church. In 1899, Pope Leo XIII raised it to even a higher rank, and Pius XI made it even higher, founded the basis for the current liturgical celebration. We consider St. Margaret Mary Alacoque as the main proponent of the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Se considera la Santa Santa Margarita Maria Alacoque como la principal proponista de la devoción al Sagrado Corazón. But in reality, <clears throat> you could say that the devotion started much earlier. In her mystical writings, St. Margaret Mary wrote, my heart is so full of love for men that it can no longer contain the flames of its burning love. I must discover to men the treasures of my heart and save them from perdition, which was revealed to her in a mystical apparition. But long before the 17th century, when St. Margaret Mary Alacoque promoted the devotion to the Sacred Heart, we can trace honoring Jesus and his love for humanity back to the scriptures and other saints. In fact, before St. Margaret Mary, antes de Santa Maria uh, Mar Margarita, there were such saints, había santos como St. Bernard of Clairvaux in 1153, St. Bonaventure in 1274, the mystics, St. Lutgarda, St. Matilde of Magdeburg in 1282, St. Matilde in, in 1299, St. Gertrude in 1302, and Ludolfo in 1378, and Catherine of Siena in 1380. So in the modern age, uh, we have, when the rigors of Jansenism were prevalent, the mercy of the Sacred Heart invoked by the saints was a great remedy. So we have 
saints like St. Francis de Sales in 1622, St. John Eudes in 1680, St. Claude Colombier in 1682, and St. John Bosco in 1888, all devotees to the Sacred Heart. And even in sacred scripture, we have images of the heart. For instance, Matthew 11. And in fact, if you see the monstrance here at our chapel, uh, the, those words are on there. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. So also from the words of the Gospel of St. John, you could say that the devotion to the heart of Jesus began in eternity because it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So, for, and then we have, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but might have eternal life. Other scripture references to the spiritual relationship of the believer to God that reference the heart, such as Matthew 6.21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 23.26, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes delight in my ways. Matthew 5.8, blessed are the pure of heart, for they will see God. Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind and from the Psalms. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Then we have Jesus on the night before he died saying to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? You could say that the devotion to the Sacred Heart started at the Last Supper with a beloved disciple who out of love and concern for the Lord who would be betrayed and handed over into the hands of wicked men resting on Jesus' breast, the center of his heart. One of his disciples, as the scripture says, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him and find, to find whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judah, son of Simon the Iscariot. Or you could say that the devotion began at the crucifixion, when those who witnessed the crucifixion are filled with sorrow and remorse in the Gospel of Luke. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, this man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what, they had, what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts. Or you could say that the devotion began when the soldier thrust the side of Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side and immediately blood and water fall down. An eyewitness has testified and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth so that you may also come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon the, him whom they have pierced. And in fact, the early church fathers, as did the Tertullian, the theologian, sp spoke of the water and blood which poured forth from the side of Jesus as evidenced in the devotion of the divine mercy and the image as the birth of the church. The early church fathers also speak of entering into the sacred wound of Jesus caused by the soldier's lance as evidence in the litany of the sacred heart which says, Cor Jesus lancea perforato misere novis. Heart of Jesus pierced by lance have mercy on us. And in her writing, St. Margaret Mary Alacoque wrote of Jesus speaking to her in her vision, my divine heart is so inflamed with love for mankind that it can no longer contain within itself the flames of its burning charity and must spread them abroad by your means. By your means, means, our means. The devotion to the Sacred Heart contains two elements then, the physical wound of the heart of Jesus and the spiritual wound of ingratitude. 400 years before St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, St. Gertrude the Great wrote a prayer to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. 
I salute thee, O sacred heart of Jesus, living and vivifying source of eternal life, infinite treasure of the divinity, ardent furnace of divine love. Thou art the place of my repose and my refuge. Enkindle in my heart the fire that are, of that ardent love with which thine own heart was inflamed. Pour into my heart the great graces of which thine is the source, and grant that my heart may be so closely united to thine that thy will be eternally conformed to thy, my will be eternally conformed to thine, since I desire that henceforth thy holy will may be the rule of all my desires and all my actions. Of the sacred heart of Jesus, the Catechism of the Catholic Church states, Jesus knew and loved each of us all during his life, his agony and his passion, and gave himself up for each one of us. The Son of God loved me and gave, loved me and gave himself for me. He has loved us all with a human heart. For this reason, the sacred heart of Jesus, pierced by our sins and for our salvation, is quite rightly considered the chief sign and symbol of that love with which the divine redeemer continually loves the eternal father and all human beings without exception. The love of the sacred heart of Jesus excludes no one and loves all, again, without exception. In the Vatican document of December of 2001, which is called the Directory of uh, Popular Piety, and the liturgy, it states, La devoción al Sagrado Corazón constituye una gran expresión histórica de la piedad de la gracia de la Iglesia hacia Jesucristo, su Esposo y Señor. Y requiere una actitud de fondo constituida por la conversión y la reparación, por el amor y la gratitud, por el empeño apostólico, la consagración a Cristo y a su obra de salvación. And in English, it says, the devotion to the Sacred Heart is a wonderful historical expression of the church's piety for Christ, her spouse and Lord. It calls for a fundamental attitude of con conversion and reparation of love and gratitude, an apostolic conviction and dedication to Christ and his saving work. So we have then all the elements of devotion to Christ and to the church and so, if you look at piety, which was constituted in this document, it says piety is all about faithfulness in relationships with parents, with country, or with God. And when associated with God, piety is considered both as the force behind popular devotion and as one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. True piety makes no demands, but instills in us the desire who always do that which is pleasing to God, and by extension, that which is pleasing to those who serve God. Piety helps us to live our lives as full and complete human beings. And we talk about conversion and reparation, which are part of the devotion. The word conversion comes from the Latin conversio, to turn around. In Greek, the word is metanoia, a change of heart. So a change from sin to repentance, from laxity to fervor, from unbelief to belief, from error to truth. La conversión y la reparación del pecado al arrepentimiento, de ser uh, flojo a ser fervoroso, de no creer a creer, del error a la verdad. So as Catholics, we believe conversion to be an interior transformation of the heart, the mind and the soul, which is a continual process of sanctification leading the believer to perfection and to live out the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. We talk about reparation in the Catholic Catechism. Every offense committed against injustice and truth entails the duty of reparation, even if its author has been forgiven. When it is impossible to publicly to make a reparation for wrong, it must be made secretly. If someone who has suffered harm cannot be directly compensated, he must be given moral satisfaction in the name of charity. This duty of reparation all concerns offenses against another's reputation. This reparation, moral and sometimes material, must be evaluated in terms of the extent of the damage inflicted. It obliges in conscience. And so in the devotion of the Sacred Heart, there is the invitation for a personal encounter with Jesus who is distressed by our neglect. Jesus is burning love for us, but we have neglected him by his disciples who fall asleep, by us who do not fully appreciate his death on the cross or the gift of the Holy Eucharist. 
So we talk about love and gratitude. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude, it does not seek its own interest, it is not quick tempered. So you see then that all this devotion is, to, is related not only to God but to others. Persevere in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving, says Colossians. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and repetition with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord who is good. God's love endures forever. Live in a manner worthy of the Lord so as to be fully pleasing in every good work, bearing fruit and growing in the knowledge of God. In Mark, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, the first one is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord with your God, your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So if we talk about the devotion to the Sacred Heart, we're talking about our hearts united to the Lord. We talk about not only our relationship to the Lord, but our relationship to others. So we talk about apostolic commitment and dedication to Christ and his saving work, which comes from what the church calls the Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. So we understand this within the context of the four marks of the church, that the whole idea of apostolic commitment and dedication to the, to the work of Christ. First of all, one, that the church is one, founded by Christ, handed on to the apostles. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are with us and the Holy Spirit unites and guides and abides in all those who believe. We talk about holy in union with Christ and the successors of Peter. We are to call, we are to live lives of holiness and witness by our service and love and sacrifice for the world. Catholic, because the entire human race is invited to hear the word of salvation and live in the community of believers anywhere in the world. Apostolic. Our faith, our tradition comes to us directly from the apostles and their successors, the pope and the bishops in what is called apostolic succession. So to be involved with the saving work of Christ is to give life to our faith, give witness to our faith, and share the good news by a life of holiness and service. Todo lo que se puede decir de la devoción al Sagrado Corazón de Jesús es de que nosotros somos uno con el Señor, y el Señor es uno con nosotros, y de que el corazón de Jesús nos inspire a nuestros corazones a la conversión y a poder dar testimonio de nuestra fe. So, when we talk about the devotion of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, it focuses on Jesus' immense love for us and invites us to make amends for our offenses, to make reparation and asks us to reciprocate in some manner for this imminent love, and invites us to consecrate ourselves to the sacred heart of Jesus by a weekly practice of the holy hour of reparation, First Friday devotion, displaying an image of the sacred heart, have the enthronement of the image in your home, wearing an image of the sacred heart, praying the novena to the sacred heart, celebrate the annual feast of the sacred heart, and we're, we'll be celebrating Friday, June 24th, and praying the litany of the Sacred Heart. Se puede hacer todo en cuanto a la devoción a una práctica semanalmente de una hora de reparación, de oración. La devoción del primer, los primeros viernes, por medio de poner una imagen del Sagrado Corazón, entronar la imagen en su casa, por medio de poder traer en su persona uh, <coughs> una imagen del Sagrado Corazón, de rezar la novena al Sagrado Corazón, de celebrar la fiesta anual de la, del Sagrado Corazón que va a ser este viernes, el 24, y también orar la letanía, de rezar la letanía al Sagrado Corazón. So this devotion to the Sacred Heart is not outdated for our times, for we know that what we see in our country and in our world, that we are very much in need of repentance, 
of reparation and true charity. On Holy Thursday night of April 13th of 2006, a tornado destroyed the old St. Patrick's Church and some of you were here, where are you there? Right, you remember that night. The tabernacle light was still glowing after the storm, but the statue of the Sacred Heart of Jesus was severely damaged, having fallen into the rubble of the choir loft. To this day, the Sacred Heart statue is symbolic of what the devotion of the Sacred Heart is all about. God's love for us is expressed in the Sacred Heart of Jesus, emanating forth for all humanity. Our love for God and his only begotten Son, Jesus, and our love for humanity is expressed by the Lord. In, el, in 2006, cuando llegó el tornado y destruyó la antigua iglesia de San Patricio, la vela del Santísimo todavía estaba prendida. Y una imagen de esta imagen de esta es de, del Sagrado Corazón de Jesús que tenemos aquí uh, se había caído uh, en, <coughs> debajo de, del coro, donde estaba el coro. Hasta este día, eh, esta estatua del Sagrado Corazón es simbólico de la devoción del Sagrado Corazón, porque a, habla de un amor que emana de, del Sagrado Corazón de Jesús para toda la humanidad. So it is fitting, therefore, that each time that we contemplate the limbless body of the Sacred Heart that we have here, I'm reminded of the words of Saint Teresa of Avila. Cristo no tiene mano o pies en la tierra sino los tuyos. Tuyos son los ojos con los que ver la compasión en este mundo. Tuyos son los pies con los que camina para hacer el bien. Christ has no body now on earth but yours, no hand, no feet but yours. Your eyes with which Christ looks out with compassion to the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless us now. Pope Francis said, El corazón de Jesús es el último símbolo de la misericordia de Dios, pero no es un símbolo imaginario, es un símbolo real que representa al centro, la fuente de donde brotó la salvación para toda la humanidad. St. Francis said, well, he's not saint yet, Pope Francis said, the heart of Jesus is the ultimate symbol of God's mercy, but it is not an imaginary symbol. It is a real symbol which represents the center, the source from which salvation for all humanity gushed forth. Sacred heart and divine mercy are actually connected to the same heart of Christ. Both speak of the fire of God's love. May that love and that fire be in your heart and in your soul this day as we celebrate one more step of the 150 year anniversary of the founding of St. Patrick. God bless. Dios los bendiga. Father, see, uh, with so many people in church, are we taking up a collection or no? Good. Oh, yeah. good. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's pass the basket now. Yeah. Maybe some questions. Yeah. If there's any questions. Sure. All right, I'll open up to questions in a while, but I just wanted to share. I, I have a, my own you know, personal devotion to the Sacred Heart. My home parish in the Philippines is the National Shrine of the Sacred Heart. You know, so I grew up with that devotion, you know, my whole family, and even up to now here, you know, I'm able to practice that in terms of a First Friday Mass. So we do have Mass, well, every Friday. So when it's First Friday, you know, that's the um, Mass dedicated to the Sacred Heart. And then I do a special Mass at 6 p.m. in Spanish on First Fridays. And the prayer cards have been passed around. Later on, we're going to pray this prayer. But if you notice at the back, it lists the 12 promises of the devotion to the Sacred Heart. You know, so together with that devotion, you know, Jesus Christ, through Margaret Mary Alacoque, has given us you know, the 12 promises for those who are devoted to His Sacred Heart. Uh, you will see here, uh, for example, number one, I will give them all the graces necessary in their state of life. Uh, I will establish peace in their homes, you know, etc. So my favorite is number 10. If you go down to number 10, it says, I will give to priests the gift of touching the most hardened hearts. So uh, I think that's been working in my experience 
as a priest. So uh, anyway, we're going to pray that later. So Father Rudy, all right. Um, if anybody has any questions, any questions on the devotion or on the statue of the Sacred Heart? Si alguien tiene preguntas sobre la devoción o la estatua del Sagrado Corazón. Let's go ahead and pray the prayer to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. O most holy heart of Jesus, fountain of every blessing, I adore you. I love you, and with lively sorrow for my sins, I offer you this poor heart of mine. Make me humble, patient, pure, and wholly obedient to your will. Grant, good Jesus, that I may live in you and for you. Protect me in the midst of danger. Comfort me in my afflictions. Give me health of body, assistance in my temporal needs, your blessing on all I do, and the grace of a holy death. Amen. So, thank you. I don't know what else, uh, Father Joe? That's it? Okay. Thank you, Father Rudy, for coming here all the way from Davenport. So will you be staying for a while? You can visit, you can visit with Father Rudy. And of course, our June Jubilee Fest is still happening outside. We also have our bingo and our um, cake, well, the cakes for the cakewalk are in the social hall. St. Patrick is also here. There he is. All right. Thank you.